Today we're going to be taking a look at recessed light hole saw bits and we have two different ones to compare. The first one is going to be a generic brand of one where it comes with a few additional accessories and we're going to compare that to the Milwaukee equivalent. Hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a good idea of which one you should choose. There's our first layer of drywall. There's our next layer of drywall. There's a nail in the way right there. Here's our fairly intact section of lath and plaster. There's what it looks like now. You can see that layer of lath and plaster, and then a one by four layer of drywall, and then another space, and then another layer of drywall. What a disaster. <laughs> All right, there we did it. We're through. All the way through the 10 layers. For those of you who haven't seen it, this is what lath and plaster looks like. So in order to drill through this stuff, we need that special blade to be able to resist kind of going through this. It has sand and things in it that will just destroy a typical hole saw blade or sawzall blade or what have you. And these hole saws are very similar, except that they are not diamond. On Milwaukee's website, they describe this as being a carbide grit edge for abrasive materials. Let's pop a light in there and just see if it, if it fits all right. So that's looking pretty good. That's gonna be our end result that we want. I'm actually gonna make a video covering all the electrical details of how to wire these things in and get that all set up. So make sure you subscribe down below so that you don't miss out on that video. So we got one hole completed with that generic version of the bit. I got it switched over to the Milwaukee bit, so we are good to go. Found out that the arbor or the center thing is compatible from the generic one to the Milwaukee and vice versa. So I actually just spun the Milwaukee blade onto the other arbor just so that I don't wear out a second pilot bit. All right, let's go ahead and do the next one using our Milwaukee drill with the Milwaukee bit. This certainly should be way better and way easier, I'm sure. It's pretty nice that you can see through the side of this so you can see where your center bit should go. It works pretty good. You just take it and dump it into the bucket and you're ready to carry on. All right, here we go. Lath and plaster. Ooh. It's kicking me pretty good. Oh, two down. I had briefly considered just kind of drawing the outline and going after it with a sawzall or a reciprocating saw. Sorry, DeWalt. I one time told them, I called them and said that I had a sawzall that was like less than two years old that had just suddenly died. And the lady's like, uh, we don't sell sawzalls. I guess that was a sensitive topic, so. Sorry, DeWalt. <clears throat> anyway, a reciprocating saw was briefly considered for cutting these holes. And now that I know that between the six, actually oh, seven recessed lights that we're gonna be doing, it's gonna be the same as drilling 21. These things are gonna be pretty nice. We'll see how they hold up. We'll analyze kind of what these edges look like after we're done drilling. But so far, I can't tell you which one's better because that would spoil the video. The one observation that I have though, even though I don't really know about the hole saws yet, is that this thing is really nice. Just the fact that all these little pieces of drywall and plaster and lath aren't falling down my shirt is worth it by itself. So definitely pick one of these up, no matter what kind of hole saw you're using. If you're drilling any holes in the ceiling, you absolutely need one of these. Definitely check out the New Deals website. We've put a whole bunch of work into it. Now, especially with the Amazon warehouse deals, those items can be super discounted depending on up to like 50% off or more some of the time. So check it out right at the top of the description. I guess break time's over. Let's get back to drilling holes. So far we have drilled a total of four holes. The Milwaukee one seems to have a much more consistent placement of the abrasive carbide material. The advantage is that this has the ability to cut a little bit smoother and be a little bit less grabby. However, the slightly more aggressive application of the carbide on this one makes it so that it seems like it cuts a little bit faster. Now I've been using these two different drills, the Milwaukee drills, I've been using the 
M18 fuel version most of the time. So this one does run a little bit slower. Either way, running in speed one is gonna be the way to go. I tried speed two briefly, but it's just these drills especially don't have enough torque to really handle that. I kind of figured it would be a slam dunk for the brushless one here because this one is supposed to have like 1200 inch pounds of torque, whereas this one's only like 500 or something like that. But this one kept kind of stalling out more frequently than this one in speed one. When you hold these things, uh, you can just instantly feel that the brushed one is a higher quality tool. And if you listen to what they sound like, this one just feels like it is way more powerful. But it was just kind of interesting in practice that they actually seemed a lot more comparable than you would expect. This one stalled out less, and when it actually caught, it kind of like kicked me around. I almost lost grip of the drill. Whereas this one, I would just be putting steady pressure on it, and all of a sudden it would just like stop, and then I have to re-pull the trigger again. Comment down below, what do you guys think about brushless versus brushed drills? And is there as big of a difference as they say there is? All right, we have all of the holes cut. Oh, hopefully your stealing is a lot easier to drill through than mine, but I guarantee you that a standard hole saw bit would have had a very difficult time managing all of the abrasive uh, plaster mainly. After you drilled one hole, you would have had a very dull bit. So we've drilled about half and half. I actually ended up drilling one additional hole with the generic bit, which I should probably look up the name of the company. Imagine they probably don't appreciate being called generic. As much as it hurts my feelings to say it, I'm gonna recommend going with the cheaper bit. This one right here just seemed like it was a lot faster cutting through the sealing material. The Milwaukee has a much smoother texture. It's not quite as aggressive. The hole size on the generic one ended up being more accurate than the hole size on the Milwaukee. This is supposed to be six and three eighths, and this one comes in about a sixteenth shy of that measurement. That actually worked in its favor. When you're operating a hole saw like this, it ends up being a tiny bit larger hole because of just the movement of the drill as you're working. This one right here is much more precise. We're pretty much right at six and three eighths, and because of that, we ended up with a hole that was just slightly oversized. We drilled all of the holes using this center arbor that came with the generic bit and uh, let me look up the brand of this really quick yeah MKC I guess they make bits so the MKC bit this just came with so much more stuff the additional hole saw bit the extra center bit for our arbor all of that came with this kit for about the same price as just this bit from Milwaukee. That's what that is. I will make sure to link to this one in the description. I'll link to both of them in case you're a Milwaukee fan like me. The M18 fuel versus the standard drills was kind of interesting. This one I thought would do way better, but actually this one seemed to stall out more than this one. So I actually wouldn't even necessarily recommend using a regular drill like this. I'd recommend the Milwaukee whole hog. Probably would be something to consider if you're gonna be drilling through as much sealing material as we were today. One thing I would definitely pick up though that I was not expecting to be as much of a slam dunk, I thought this was gonna be kind of more of a gimmick, but I was sitting underneath this thing for long periods of time, pushing up directly underneath it. Definitely recommend picking one of these up if you're ever gonna be drilling any holes in any surface above where you are working. All right, I think that's all that we have to say for this particular topic. If you guys have other thoughts, put them in the comment section down below and I'd love to talk to you guys there. We will put a couple videos on the screen right here for you guys to choose from and we'll talk to you over there in just a few seconds. Thanks again for watching. See you later.